Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Concordia Lutheran Church's virtual worship. Thank you all for being here this morning, and it's good to be back. I want to take just a moment and thank all the members of Concordia Lutheran Church who allowed me to have a couple, uh, to have some time of vacation. Um, it was really rejuvenating for me, and I really thank you all for that great gift that you uh, gave to me. And I'm really hoping this summer that all of you who are watching this today find some time for yourselves to be rejuvenated as well. We all need that in our lives. We need time to be away and to find our, find our spirit again and come back even stronger. So thank you all again for that time. So this week, this month, as some of you may know, is uh, Pride Month for our LGBTQ plus siblings. In this past January, our congregation took a, an important vote. We voted unanimous, unanimously as a congregation to become a reconciling in Christ congregation. Now, for those of you who are watching who don't know what that means, Reconciling Christ is a Lutheran program that churches go, local churches go through to become a welcoming space for people who identify as LGBTQ+. And I was really proud of our congregation during that process. I was proud we went through it, and I was really proud of the way in which we had those conversations, that people were open to learning and understanding, that we were respectful of each other, and of the people in our congregation who were already here who were LGBTQ+. Uh, now, that's just the first step, quite frankly, for our congregation, because being a place of welcome means that we continue to learn and understand. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning in our sermon. I would really like to thank Jim Doyle for being here this morning recording our worship. I'd like to thank Eric and Kelly Swanson for being our singers this morning. And of course, thanks to Janet for once again, as usual, playing the piano for us this morning. So let us begin our worship as we sing our gathering song number 757, All My Hope on God is Founded. Oh 
Wonderful, wonderful. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world, mold us into a people who welcome your world and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Today our gospel comes to us from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus says, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. So, like I said, I was thinking about Pride Month and about the journey that the church has taken in our long history with the LGBTQ plus community to get to this point. And I don't mean the church just in terms of Concordia, I mean in the larger sense of that word. And I think it's remarkable that we've gotten to the point where I can preach openly about pride in being an LGBTQ plus person. And it made me think about how dangerous it is to place Christian morality in a specific time and place. God's morality is not contained in the context of our human context certain times and places. Because our understanding as human beings of what is moral changes over time. It always, it always has. And when we come to be, understand something, right, better, people can't handle that change in their mind. They think that God ordained it. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had in my life with people in the church who said something like, well, you know, that's the way it's always been. But what they really meant to say, or what they should have said, what is, that's the way it's always been for them. See, that was about their time and their place. It was about the morality that they grew up with. And God's word is always too big to be confined to our way of thinking. God's word is alive, it is dynamic, and it's always unchanging. God's word is ultimately about God's love and grace, and that never changes. What changes is our understanding of what it means in our context. And it's the Holy Spirit that weaves its way around us and hopefully opens us up so that we can love more. And our gospel for this morning is a good example of that. I've read this gospel many times. I've preached on it, and I've always assumed that it's about us being welcoming to other people. However, it was pointed out to me this week that it's really about other people welcoming us. And doesn't that change the whole meaning of the text? Jesus is sending out his disciples into what he knows is a hostile world. Jesus knows that people, that not everyone is going to want to know about God's love and grace. Not everyone cares about justice and mercy. So he tells them, to be glad when they find people that want to welcome them. I've always been amazed that LGBTQ plus people would want to be part of the church because we've done everything in our power to drive them away. We have done everything we can think of to make the church an inhospitable place to them. And what was amazing to me is that they fought so hard to remain in the church. I had gay friends in seminary who struggled because at that time, the church told them it was not okay to be themselves. And yet, they still wanted to serve God and other people in the church. What does that say? Perhaps it says 
that we are truly blessed by their righteousness. We are blessed by their welcoming of us who are straight. Even when we were hostile to them, they wanted us to come and be with them. Maybe that should be our true mission, not merely to welcome LGBTQ plus people, but have a desire to be welcomed by them, to want to be invited into their sacred spaces. As usual, Jesus' words challenge us to think of what it really means to be the bearers of good news. Because the good news isn't merely that Jesus loves you. It's that Jesus has set us free, free from the bounds of the law, sets us free to be ourselves, sets us free to live in grace. And oh, how I desire to live in that space, to not judge each other because of who we love or who we are. That is truly the good news. And it is the good news that Jesus brought to the world. It is the good news of the kingdom to come. But that news doesn't come with opposition because we always struggle to let people be who they are without imposing our ideas of morality upon them. This morning, I want to offer all the LGBTQ plus people who are watching this an apology from the church. For any child of God who was ever told they were going to hell, for any child of God who was ever kicked out of their family, for any child of God who had to endure conversion therapy, for every, any child of God who was ever made to stay in the closet, for any child of God who was made to feel that they were sinful because of who, because of their identity, for any child of God that was told you should love the sinner and hate the sin, I want to ask on behalf of the church for your forgiveness today, because I want the church to be welcomed by you. But I also know that that's quite frankly not enough. Real trust and accountability comes from vowing to do better. So if you're watching this and you're a heterosexual, I ask for you to continue to have an open heart and mind, to continue to learn and educate yourself about the issues facing the LGBTQ community. I'll share with you this morning a piece of my own story. I've always considered myself an ally of the LGBTQ community. It's an ethic actually I got from my grandparents. When I was in college, the church, the LCA, was discussing sexuality, and it was a hot, hot topic, especially back then, even more so than now. And at Thanksgiving, I was talking to my grandfather, who also happened to be a Lutheran pastor, and he told me, everyone's a child of God, that it's our job as Christians to love everyone, and it didn't matter who people had sex with. My grandfather, of course, was a little bit ahead of his time, but what I didn't know is that core value that he taught me was going to be a lifelong adventure, that I was going to have to keep on having an open heart and learn new things. And I do. I learn new things all the time. I really try to do that. I try to listen before I speak, try to hear a person's story, and I try to tell that person that I heard them, I believe them, and I am with them. I don't know where you are on your journey, but I hope that you want to be welcomed into those spaces. I hope you'll want to hear those stories and be with other people on their journeys because we want the good news of Jesus Christ to really be good news, to be news that is joyful and freeing. Jesus invites us today to live in that good news, to be welcomed into the homes of people who have stories to share with us, people to want to hear of a loving God that blesses every person as a unique and special child. This is the mission that Jesus sends us out to do. So today, let us embrace that admission, that mission with passion and love and grace. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is number 779, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound.
called into unity with one another in the whole creation. Let us pray for our, for our, sh let us pray for our shared gut world. God of compassion, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal, f festal shout of praise. Hear us, O oh God. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. Especially, we pray this day for all those who are on our prayer list. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you, you gather us in your embrace and all who have died, especially all those within our congregation. Keep us steadfast in your faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O oh God. Hear our own prayers, may be offered aloud or in our hearts. Receive these prayers, O God, and to those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to thank you all for being here this morning. I have a couple of announcements, actually, this morning. The first one is that this Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we'll have our first waterside chat. This summer, we're going to do waterside chats instead of fireside chats. So join us on Facebook Live at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. Second is that next Sunday at 11 o'clock, we will be having communion on Zoom. And so if you would like to participate in communion, we will be having that on Zoom prior to our coffee hour. And third, on July 12th, we'll be having Picnic Church. We're asking people to sign up if you plan on coming to that by emailing the church so that we can have some, we can know some who's coming. Um, so please sign up for that. And the final announcement is that today, Camp Calumet is having a one-day campaign. Uh, as you know, they had to close their summer camp this summer. So we're asked, they're asking people who uh, would like to make a gift, that today is a day to make a gift. So if you can do that, please go to their website, calumet.org, and make a gift if you would like to continue to support Calumet and make it continue to keep it strong. I want to end this morning with a couple quotes from our siblings in the LGBTQ plus community. The first comes from Laverne Cox, who was the first woman to receive an Emmy for her role in the show Orange is the New Black. She said, we must lift up the stories of those most at risk. And statistically, trans people of color who are poor and working class are the most at risk. And then one of the shows I love is Queer Eye. I don't know if you've ever seen it. And if you're a Lutheran, you should definitely watch 
the first episode of season two because it's about a Lutheran minister. So uh, if I would encourage you to watch that, but I love that show. And I'm gonna, so I'm just gonna give, give a couple quotes from the Fab Five. The first is this, by saying I wanna let you know I'm inviting you into my life and I want you to be part of it. That's the healthiest thing you can do. Another quote, when, you say, when people say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, it's not true because you can reinvent yourself and learn new things whenever you want. And finally, when people build up walls, they end up keeping other people out, but they're also keeping themselves in. And finally, from Harvey Milk, who was the first openly gay, publicly elected official in California, who also tragically was assassinated while in office, all young people, regardless of their sexual orientation or identity, deserve a safe and supportive environment in which to achieve their full potential. Let us continue together so the church is one of those places. Let us continue to work so that we are welcomed into the spaces where people will share their stories with us. Let us work to bring the good news of God to all God's children. And now the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may bound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the God of grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Let's sing our sending song, Give to Our God Immortal Praise, number 848. Thanks again for being here today and happy Pride Month to everybody and thanks to Jim for recording this morning and thanks to Kelly and Eric for singing what beautiful, uh, it was nice to have two voices and beautiful singing this morning. Thanks for being here. Thanks again to Janet for playing the piano. And now go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God.